smoky skies across central and eastern Kentucky. I'm tracking the wildfire threat and a much colder pattern just ahead. Election day is right around the corner. Polls will open in about 14 hours here in Kentucky. And the race between the presidential candidates, it's getting closer. We'll show you just how close. And Senator Rand Paul and Mayor Jim Gray are traveling from one end of the state to the other today. Their final message to voters coming up. This is WKYT News at 4. Good afternoon to you and thanks for watching WKYT News at 4. I'm Amber Philpott reporting. We're kicking off the work week with some beautiful weather. Take a look, but we are tracking a big drop in temperatures. WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has an early look at the forecast. Funny seeing Triangle Park and yeah. uh, all the ice down there and then this weather. I know, right? And before too long, they're going to get actually some colder weather that may be much more conducive for the skating rink. Short term, it's all about the need for rain across central and eastern Kentucky. If you've been outside today, you've noticed the smell that is in the air, even into central Kentucky. It's coming from the forest fires that are out of control into the southeastern part of the state. Look at our Jackson camp and all the smoke filling the skies. Mountain Parkway, even into the parkway here, we've got reduced visibilities, and the highway department putting out statements about how the visibilities are greatly reduced here with some fires burning into Powell County. Smoke is filling the air coming from those fires into southeastern Kentucky. This is a visible up close satellite picture from the folks at NASA. Take a look at the fires from East Tennessee, uh, western parts of North Carolina, southeastern Kentucky, and look at how the smoke makes its way all the way into parts of central Kentucky. So those fires that are burning out of control there are going to continue to usher in the smoke filled air not only for this evening, but right on in to the day tomorrow. What we really need is some rain. We've got a cold front that is off to our west. That is going to increase our rain chances toward the end of your election day. Amber, when I come back in about 15 minutes, we will go hour by hour to break down the much needed rain chances and also talk about a much colder pattern that kicks in as well. Chris, we'll see you in just a bit. Thank you. It is the last day of the 2016 campaign season. Voting kicks off tomorrow morning, and Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are on their last campaign push through battleground states. The most recent CNN poll uh, has Clinton with a four point lead, but the race is tight and will depend, of course, on voter turnout. Steve Nannis has a look at the latest on the campaign trail and our top story at four. On the final day of campaigning, Hillary Clinton. And Donald Trump hitting the trail at breakneck speed and focused on key battlegrounds. In Pennsylvania, it's all about election day. Clinton campaigning today in the crucial toss up of North Carolina, also going to Michigan and Pennsylvania, where Clinton's lead has narrowed in recent weeks. President Obama, one of Clinton's biggest assets on the trail, appearing in Michigan and North Carolina before joining Hillary Clinton, former President Bill Clinton, and the First Lady for a Philadelphia rally. This is the last day of our campaign. Who would have believed this? Trump hitting five states today. He'll be in Pennsylvania and Michigan, also Florida, North Carolina, and New Hampshire. Sunday night's bombshell from FBI Director James Comey saying in a letter to Congress that they've completed their review of the newly discovered emails and found nothing to change their conclusions from July, that Hillary Clinton should not face criminal charges, has both campaigns reacting to the last minute news. We're glad to get that news, but not surprised. Hillary Clinton should not even be allowed to run for the presidency of the United States. With what's happening with our justice, our country is a laughing stock. With that news coming just a day and a half before polls open Tuesday, it's unclear how it will play in voters' minds. In Washington, I'm Steve Nannis. Candidates for Kentucky's U.S. Senate seat are also on the move today. Democrat Lexington Mayor Jim Gray is challenging incumbent Republican Senator Rand Paul. And both candidates are making several stops today in eastern, central, and western Kentucky, urging voters to head to the polls tomorrow. There's a clear contrast in vision between them and us. We want small constitutional government that defends the country, that's primary priority above all other priorities is to defend the country. I'm here to serve the people of Kentucky, to serve the people of Eastern Kentucky, create jobs. That's my purpose. I will not be running for president. I will be here working for the people of Eastern Kentucky to find jobs and opportunity. That's what I'm here for. 
Gray's last stop will be at Fifth Third Pavilion here in Lexington for a hometown rally at 7 tonight. Paul will end the day in his hometown of Bowling Green. The fate of Kentucky's House of Representatives will be decided tomorrow as well. Republicans need to pick up just four seats to win a majority of the state house for the first time since 1920. And if they succeed, it would give Republicans almost complete control of state government. The Attorney General and Secretary of State would be the lone executive offices held by Democrats. Right now, Kentucky's state house is the only legislative chamber in the South still controlled by Democrats. And of course, we will have complete election coverage tomorrow here on WKYT. We will be here when the polls close at 6 p.m. and we'll be keeping tabs on all of the races as those numbers come in. Plus, we will have interactive results for you on WKYT.com. We're working on a number of other stories for you on WKYT starting at 4:30. Sam Dick joins us now from the newsroom with a look at some of the news in progress. Hello, Sam. Good afternoon, Amber. The Kentucky Division of Forestry still has its hands full tonight with wildfires. At last check, they have crews battling at least 20 forest fires spread over 11,000 acres. The largest fires are in Harlan, Letcher, and Pike counties. But the problem is, as soon as crews contain one fire, more start popping up. Right now, the National Guard is using helicopters to drop water on the smaller fires. They're hoping that this will help those fires from becoming larger. We will talk to forestry leaders in the next half hour on WKYT News at 4.30. Friends and family are remembering a former Kentucky man who was shot and killed in Virginia over the weekend. 25-year-old Michael Rather was serving in the military on a naval ship. Police say that Rather was shot during an attempted robbery on Saturday morning. His family says he leaves behind a wife and two children. We will talk to his mother about how he'll be remembered on WKYT News at 5.30 tonight. Kentucky enjoyed first place in the SEC East for a few hours Saturday night before losing to Georgia. But the Cats don't have much time to sulk. They can still become bowl eligible Saturday with a win at Tennessee. And if UK wins, it will be the first time they've won five SEC games in a season since 1977. We'll hear from head coach Mark Stoops coming up on WKYT News at 5. That's a look at some of the news in progress on this Monday. Amber, back to you. Sam, thank you. Now to some stories making headlines across the nation at four. Investigators are again searching the property of an alleged serial killer in rural South Carolina today. Todd Colop was arrested Thursday after investigators found a woman chained on his property. After his arrest, police say he confessed to killing several people. CBS's David Begno reports from nearby Spartanburg. Todd Colop was denied bond on Sunday as he appeared before a South Carolina judge. The family members of victims he allegedly killed 13 years ago to the day sat right behind him. Understanding that the family's here, anything you wish to say at this time? I've done it this time, sir. Investigators say the 45 year old realtor confessed to killing four people at a motorcycle shop in Spartanburg County in 2003. One of them was the shop's owner, Scott Ponder. I had made peace that it was a phone call I was never going to get. Ponder's then wife, Melissa Brackman, got that phone call on Saturday. It was a detective calling with news of her husband's alleged killer. She says Colop was a disgruntled customer at her husband's store and credits 30 year old Kayla Brown for his capture. If she had not been found alive, we wouldn't be sitting here having an interview right now. Colop was arrested last Thursday. Investigators discovered Brown chained up like a dog inside of a metal storage container on Colop's rural South Carolina property. They later found her boyfriend's remains in a shallow grave nearby. On Saturday, Colop took investigators to where he says two other bodies are buried, one of which has been found. Wilton Lawrence sold Colop the property where the bodies have been found. He didn't want neighbors, friends, he just wanted privacy. 30 years ago, Todd Colop was convicted in Arizona of kidnapping and raping a 14 year old girl. Now, he was 15 at the time. They sent him away to prison for more than 10 years. When he got out, he registered as a sex offender, moved here to South Carolina, and became a realtor. It's worth noting he's been talking to investigators without an attorney, and yesterday the judge told him, You are facing the death penalty. David Begno, CBS News, Spartanburg County, South Carolina. Police say the investigation is now expanded to other properties Colep owns or used to own both inside and outside of South Carolina. 
Some sad news to pass along this afternoon. The family of former U.S. Attorney General Janet Reno says she passed away this morning. The 78 year old reportedly died at her home in Miami after a 20 year battle with Parkinson's disease. Reno was the nation's first ever female attorney general. She served under President Bill Clinton from 1993 to 2001. Still ahead here on WKYT News at 4. Soon you'll be able to cut the line at McDonald's. Details on their new app orders. And Samsung isn't wasting time coming up with their next Galaxy phone. We'll take a look at their new plans for the S8. That's next. Keep up with the latest news on WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. It's not the end of the Galaxy phones for Samsung. The tech giant has released new details about its newest phone, the Galaxy S8. That begins today's Money Watch. Samsung Electronics says it will offer an artificial intelligence assistance service in the upcoming flagship smartphone. The company says the Galaxy S8 will let users order food or perform other tasks without going through a third party application, but by simply asking the phone's virtual assistant. The announcement follows the controversial release and recall of the Samsung Galaxy Note 7. The phone could come out in early 2017. Start saving up your Kohl's cash. The chain has landed a deal with Apple to draw in customers this holiday season. Starting November 15th, Kohl's will start selling the Apple Watch at 400 of its stores. The announcement comes just weeks after rival Macy's landed a similar deal with Apple. Electronic car maker, or electric car maker, rather, Tesla Motor says it will end free use of its worldwide charging station network. The company says cars ordered after January 1st of 2017 will get roughly 1,000 miles worth of credits at the supercharging stations. After those credits are used, owners will have to pay fees. Cars ordered or sold on or before January 1st would still get free charging. Tesla says it will release fee details later this year. McDonald's is making some big changes. Changes to its food and service. Business Insider reports that McDonald's is getting ready to launch a feature on its app that would let users order and pay for food ahead of time. And the fast food restaurant is releasing new details about its new version of the Big Mac. The chain has been changing its menu lately to reverse a slowdown in sales. The Grand Mac will have two all beef patties weighing a third of a pound. The Mac Junior will have one patty and no middle bun. I'm Deanne Stevens, out and about today, preparing for the launch party of Bridal Bliss Magazine. More when we return here on WKYT. And we are preparing for, finally, some big weather changes. I'll show you why this cold front is one of two to knock the temperatures down and maybe increase our rain chances. That's next. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Smoky skies filling uh, the air across central and eastern Kentucky today. Those brush fires, those forest fires that continue to burn out of control into the southeastern part of the state. Well, the flow is causing a scene like this to play out right now in Lexington. Kind of looks like a summer haze. That smoke that uh, you're seeing here between the station and Hamburg Pavilion just across the street. And that smoky air is again coming from all the fires across southern Kentucky. Winds are coming from the south and the southeast. They're fairly light, but all that smoke that is across eastern and southeastern Kentucky is being slowly drawn up into parts of northern Kentucky. And actually, some of that now being taken into southern Ohio and parts of Indiana as well. So that's what we are dealing with. So folks in the central Kentucky waking up this morning, taking a step outside and boy, oh boy, it just hit you, didn't it? And imagine what it's like here in the southern and eastern Kentucky. If you have respiratory issues, you don't want to be outside too long with the smoky air. Can we get some rain in here? Short answer to that is yes. Can we get enough rain in here? Mm. Low pressure that is out across the plains, cold front that is on the move. Notice you have that nice little spin. Chilly air coming in behind this, warm air coming in out ahead of this. The clouds will increase tonight. This isn't a ton of rain that is on the way. Some of us may pick up a quarter of an inch. Best chance for that would be across the southeastern corner of the state. So at least that's some good news. That's a rainfall forecast from late tomorrow and into the day on Wednesday. Let's go hour by hour on you. 11 o'clock this evening, we'll drop it up to 40s to low 50s and kind of hold there through the overnight as clouds increase. Your election day. Noontime temperatures will be into the mid-60s. Clouds will increase. We're mainly dry 
And then by the time the polls are closing into parts of central Kentucky, we could see a shower or two. Better chance tomorrow evening. And you notice at 10 o'clock how you have some heavier rains trying to break out southeastern Kentucky. Fingers crossed on that, that that is indeed the case. Now the chill is on. For your Wednesday, chilly high pressure nosing its way on in, likely to not be strong enough to clear the skies out. So look at the noontime temperature on Wednesday, mid 40s. By late in the day, this may be a 45 to 50 kind of day into parts of eastern Kentucky and low 50s central Kentucky, colder than normal. By 11 o'clock Wednesday evening, already some upper 30s that are showing up. And as we go into Thursday morning, many of us will be right around the freezing mark into most of central and eastern Kentucky. Then there's another cold shot that is on the way as we go into uh, Friday night. Your Veterans Day looks really good with clouds increasing. It's a mainly dry front into town early Saturday, but look at that high temperature, 46 degrees. We are into the 20s Saturday night and Sunday morning. Let's check on traffic. Here's Officer Don. A couple of things happening, including a collision right now. This one's at Waller and Elizabeth. Two cars involved in that uh, crash, and it looks like one lane is blocked on Waller uh, approaching the intersection there. Drive times this afternoon to Nicholasville, still, still pretty quiet, uh, less than 13 minutes. To Versailles, about 12 minutes, and 23 to Winchester. Now back to you in the studio. Officer Don, thank you. If you've ever planned one, you know that weddings can be stressful, but a new magazine aims to help brides in central Kentucky. Our Deanne Stevens is out and about today, and she gets a sneak peek of a magazine. Hi, Deanne. Hey, good afternoon, guys. It is a very exciting night. It's a launch party for the all new Bridal Bliss magazine, and we are getting a sneak peek of it. Right this moment because you know, nobody can see it till what six o'clock, right? Absolutely, yes. Sarah Burton is with us and Becca is with us as well, and you two are two of three people who have put this Bridal Bliss magazine together. What made you want to do this? We just wanted brides in our area to have a lookbook, have a resource, and be able to see what all of our local vendors have to offer. And I love Becca when you guys said, Dean, it's all local. It's local authors, local vendors, as Sarah mentioned. This is important to our community because that means money's going to stay here, right? Sure. Yes, we are so excited to be able to get this magazine into brides' hands so they can actually connect with the vendors that we have here. Everyone here is so amazing, and we just can't wait to share those with local couples here in Lexington. Tell us what we're we're going to see in Bridal Bliss. We have 14 real weddings that are featured. We have uh, weddings that have $10,000 budgets. We have weddings up to $70,000 budgets. We have articles. I think there's 14 articles from local vendors. So um, just getting the opportunity to show what we really have to offer here in Lexington. Man, and this time of year is probably a lot of folks maybe getting a ring, maybe a Thanksgiving or Christmas. This will help guide them along the way over the next few months. Becca? Yes, we're really hoping that by getting their hands on this magazine, they'll be able to see and feel and just get absolutely as much inspiration as they can. Well, we're pretty excited you guys are doing this. The launch party, you can get it on the excitement, is going on from 6 to 8 o'clock tonight here at Purden Riddle and Sales. They're located in Woodhill Shopping Center. Now, coming up at 450, Lexington as a destination wedding. It is true. We're going to hear more about it. Check out Bridal Bliss Magazine. Uh, check out all their socials. Too. Beginning at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, if you can't make the launch party tonight, you can come here to Purdens and get your hands on the new publication. I'm Deanne Stevens, out and about. Back to you guys. Up next in Better Living, looking for a job? We'll go over some resume tips and blunders to avoid. And later on WKYT News at 430, polls open in Kentucky in a little more than 12 hours, and state leaders are expecting a huge turnout. We'll talk to them about their plan to prevent voter fraud issues. And Tuesday night's Mega Millions jackpot is $54 million, and Wednesday night's Powerball jackpot is $236 million. It is time now for better living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. It is not always easy to land a job. Applicants are often up against hundreds of people, which is why having a standout resume is more important than ever. Kenneth Craig has more on what recruiters are looking for and the critical mistakes some job seekers are making. My name is Dawn Marie. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What's going on? This is my resume. Dawn Marie Warner knows just how important that resume can be, which is why she brought a stack of them to this New York City job fair, hoping to stand out in a sea of applicants. How difficult is it? 
Um, it's very difficult because the field is, everything is so competitive. A recent survey from CareerBuilder found 43% of hiring managers spend less than a minute looking at a resume. That's why job coach Christine Mensa says it's critical to get right to the point. So you have to grab their attention very quickly. You know, you cannot have a, a long paragraph, a long essay, bullet points, to the point, powerful action verbs. In the survey, 75% of HR managers also reported finding lies on resumes. And they also spotted plenty of mistakes, which can kill an applicant's chances. What I do. Xavier Brown admits he learned that lesson the hard way. On one of my resumes, I ended up having a question mark next to my skills. So it makes it look like it's like, oh, he's compassionate? <laughs> Instead of saying, oh, he's compassionate. This time around, his resumes are typo free. He's hoping it catches an employer's eye and leads to a new job. Kenneth Craig, CBS News, New York. More bad news from Samsung today. The company is recalling nearly 3 million top load washing machines in the U.S. Samsung says they've had reports of injuries caused by the tops of the machines detaching during use. Owners should check with Samsung to see if their washer is involved. They're offering repairs, rebates, even refunds. IKEA is recalling 29 million mom and other models of chest and dressers in the U.S. The move comes after the seventh reported death of a child trapped by an IKEA chest or dresser tipping over. The company is offering refunds and repair kits. It's asking people to make sure their chest and dressers are firmly attached to a wall. Let's head over to Chris for another check of the weather, and it is just gorgeous out there, Chris. Yeah, it's really nice. That's good, and it's also very bad, too, because we have so many fires that are burning out of control, and the smoke out there is very thick all the way into central Kentucky as of now. That shows up on our Lexington camp. Notice how you have that hazy look out there and almost has a brown tint to it. That's the fires. Uh, there's smoke from the fires into southeastern Kentucky showing up on uh, the Corbin cam. And look at this smoke into Jackson, seeing a little bit there into Moorhead. Now, if you're out and about this evening, it's a nice one, but the smell of smoke will linger as temperatures stay into the 50s right up through 11 o'clock this evening with a gusty wind that will continue to begin to crank up. You'll notice more in the way of some clouds. And then we roll our way into Election Day, and we're going to change it up. At least in terms of the weather, we've got clouds and some rains uh, blowing into town. We'll track those when I get back in just a moment. WKYT News at 4.30 starts now.